Hello, ladies. Just letting everyone in at the moment. Hold on, someone has it. Hi everyone. Hello. Oh, I just can't get in. Did you get your email? Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, start video. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Bear with me, I'm just trying to get someone who's... Hi, Mom. <laughs> oh. Okay. Mm. Oh, really? Oh, nice. There's a lot missing. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me, they're all coming in now. I've just got someone who's just trying to message them. The, uh, I'll find it on my emails now. How's everybody? So I'll just let us know. Just, sorry, it's been quiet. I'm just trying to message someone the link. They haven't got it. Good, good. How's everyone? Thank you. Good, good. Very well. I think I might have, have I got any new ones on my little list. Anyone that new is Neil, we all been here. Yeah. I need to pin myself. Spotlight. There we go. Get that right. So it's pumpkin time. Turn that down. <laughs> Crazy half term. How are you, Sarah? Did you get your results from your son in the end? Yeah, he's, he's negative, thank goodness. Oh, <laughs> not that, but nothing. <laughs> Hello. Laura's married to Scotland. Hi. <clears throat> hey. <clears throat> hey. And we got Christy, Kirsty from Scotland. Laura, Kirsty's up, lives up in Scotland. Laura's managed to get in. So I've lost no Laura's, Laura's run off. Look, <laughs> <laughs> Laura's on holiday up there. Kirsty managed to get the bottle of wine. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she has probably. You gone for your wine, <laughs> Laura? Yes, she has. You see, Kirsty, you know her well. <laughs> exactly. What she said. Right. right. Have a look. Work for you. I'm trying to find the link at the moment. If you just bear with me, I'm just being a bit silent. I've got messages coming in. I'm flicking them off all over the place at the moment. You here, Shelley? There we are. Hey, yeah. Hello, hello. Sorry, I was trying to find my emails to send it to you. That's all right. <laughs> we got there in the end. Yeah, I had lots of emails come in today, so I was trying to scroll down to find it. But we got there. There we go. It's the first time I've not had the email. I know. Last week was a complete disaster. I don't know. Ben Bright, I don't know what they were doing. So I did check today, and I know it all gone through. Very weird. Sometimes they miss it. Sometimes it's the booking system that I am. Um, yeah. Um, so I did I did three times and then I thought, right, I'm going to put it. If you are unsure, if you haven't got it, I'm always going to post it in the event about an hour before. I couldn't find it on the event, but then but you then sent it, so it's fine. Yeah, it's, I just, hmm, I don't know how I'm going to do that then. It's just, it's just under the post under event. It just yeah. um, if you can't find it, 
but yeah maybe please. i just haven't quite got to it before you sent it on <laughs> it's, it's a palaver to find <laughs> but i think we'll make a start because be, i know there's a few that are running late a little pop in anyway oh there we go there we go oh it's quite early today <laughs> Can everyone hear me all right? Yep. Good. So I've got a new camera I'm working with at the moment. So hopefully it'll work all right. So today we are doing pumpkins and we are working with <coughs> colours, your pen, you'll need your wax candle. I think I'll throw everything in there for you today. Let's have a little play with um, the shapes freewheeling a little bit of freewheeling and you can pop in what you want to do i think i'll make a start because you can actually follow even if they're a little bit Ula, your need so everybody usual information chop your paper into <coughs> i'm going to go down to my other camera you'll see what i mean in a minute just give bear with me while i switch over I need to see what I'm, you're seeing. There you go, that's better. Right, so you've, you've done it into quarters. And then we're gonna start putting the dots on. And I'm gonna follow behind here, so I don't go too fast. So just quarter your page, roughly. This is just so we can position it kind of onto the paper and we haven't got, we don't lose any of the pumpkins. So what we're gonna do is start our little dot system that we work from. So start in the middle there, and go off to the right, 14 dots a centimetre apart. Back to the middle, and go up five dots about a centimetre apart. It's just so we can place them in the right place. I mean, it doesn't matter if they're a bit squiff off because they're circles. And then <clears throat> there's 14 across the other way as well, to the left, this way. On the horizontal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there we go. There's Julia. And then we are going down seven dots a centimetre apart. <laughs> Julia, you're you all right? It's too many. Where's Julia? Julia's just arrived in. Julia, we, all we've done is put the cross in the middle and the dots on the side. Un unmute yourself for a sec, Julia. All good. Did you get the dots? How, how many are there along each way? Right, so it's 14 both that way. 14 that way, 14 that way. <laughs> And then five up and seven down. Cool. One centimetre apart. All right. <laughs> How's everyone? Has everyone done that? Thumbs up if you have. You're right, Hannah. You're concentrating there on your ruler. <laughs> and some people told me what that building was last week, and I can't remember to tell you actually. Someone researched it. It's apparently a um, very smart department block where people live. Um, so that's quite interesting. I thought it would be some kind of, I don't know, hotel or something, but it's not. Right, let's get the first pumpkin on. <clears throat> so, giving you the dots that kind of, we're working on this one here, this big one here. So we're gonna draw the circle and then we're gonna lose some of the circle. So this part here. Yes, that's the one. Hey, that was you. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> Someone's just put it in the chat. 
Um, so we're going to lose this part here once we've done it. But I want you to start, so you can hardly get the right size, so they're all almost in proportion. You go to the right, and you start at the third dot, and up at the third, mm. and then down. This is your nine and a half point, and then one down here, mm. six. So basically, if you follow those points on there, so I'm going to count up one, two, three, draw myself a dot. Count across, one, two, three, draw myself a dot, and then count across nine and a half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half, little dot, and then count down seven, six, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, and do myself a little dot. Then I'm going to look at the screen there. I would probably start at this three and go up and then go round. Give it a nice pumpkin shape, This because you're going to be going inside that shape with your pumpkin. So this is to give you the circle. So if it goes up, this is give you the circle to work with. So don't do it teeny tiny. The biggest pumpkin. Can someone just make sure they're on mute for me? Please. So don't worry, don't be too like accurate with it, accurate with it. Just draw yourself kind of a pumpkin shaped circle. And then you can, I've just gone over mine like that background there I have a bit of a pointy bit I'll sort that out when I put the pumpkin in, inside so I'm going to go inside that and pop the big pumpkin but when I draw a circle I tend to just go around like that until I've got the shape I want it's not an exact circle because obviously it's a pumpkin shape so everyone got their little shape or big shape this is the big one comes up if you've got the big one this is going to test your painting skills tonight I hope you realize and I forgot, I haven't put a video in yet. I do realize that. I want to see how you do. And then I know what I've got to start from. <laughs> so this is my aim for tonight. Right. We have pumpkin number one on, which is the red one. And we're going to put pumpkin number two. Now, this is we're coming slightly down. And um, we're going to start at, oh, we need to like, add another dot on. That was right. When I was doing my instructions, I needed to pop another. So on your downward one, you had seven. Give yourself another centimeter. So you've got an eighth dot there. And then you're gonna draw yourself a square across. So you're gonna come off from the eighth and you join it up with 13. So you draw that first, the L shape. So do that first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Um, it's just to give you the shape that where to put the other one. So it's going to be some shape. Then this line, this vertical line here, starts at the three and a half dot. So count across three and a half. One, two, three and a half. You draw yourself a quick line down. And then this horizontal line just here. It's just half a centimetre down. You can approximate that, you just draw your ruler across. Mm. Then, as you can see on the screen there, you've got a slightly turned, if you look at the pumpkin, we're now doing this one. So just bear that in mind when you're drawing the shape of it. A slightly flat bottom, you can see on there, mine's not, mine's, it looks like it's been sat on mine. Yeah? That's kind of the shape you're going for. Mm. So just draw that on. So similar to mine, doesn't have to look exactly. They're your pumpkins, they can look slightly different, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what I've done. That's what I've done behind the scenes there. As I said, I go over mine a little bit like that. I'll rub that all out. Depends how messy you are. I kind of like to just go round and round and round till I've got the shape that I want. And then tidy it up afterwards, especially if you've got those super duper rubber electronic rubbers. I should find mine. I'd lost mine for a bit. I was using that today, so I had a commission to do someone's house. So when you have done that, 
you can rub out that line. You no longer need it because that pumpkin sits behind the other one. And you can rub out the box that you'd created this little one in. You, don't long, you no longer need that either. Just tidy it up a little bit. Oh, who's got their, has someone got their sound on? It's Julie. Sorry. <laughs> now you've got your I'm electronic on. rubber going. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my phone tonight. I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing with the buttons. So That's all right. I think they were about perfectly fine. I could hear an electronic rubber going. <laughs> I could hear you whizzing up your thing. So th these are brilliant if you've got... Um, and the range do them cheapest, I think, don't they, Julie? I believe. You thought um, it I was think I got mine in. Um, I think I got mine in Hobbycraft. Hobbycraft, okay. Yeah. Hobbycraft. They're um, on Amazon. They're more expensive, but they're actually really handy if you're doing lots of detailed drawing or any drawing, and you don't want to rub out lots of lines. You can just. It's very good. Very handy, actually. I've used mine a lot. They do make a funny noise. It's what you can hear in the background. Me doing that. Right. Debbie, can you hold that still so we can see the brand name? Oh, yeah, sorry. Derwin. Derwin, okay, yeah. thank you. I can send, I can put a link in. I don't get commission, but Julie got, what's yours, Julie? Julie's, sorry, Julie's on her phone, so she's, Julie got one from yeah. Hobbycraft, and it's just Hobbycraft's version. I don't know what that says on there. What does it say, Julie? It says um, E O N O, I think. Okay, so yeah. Hobbycraft have them. I know the range have these. They're cheaper than Amazon, but you can get them on Amazon. They just they come with little pellet kind of things. Which I've probably can't find now. I want to show you. Um, Hobbycraft have the Derwent ones as well. Do they? Yeah. yeah. They come with these funny little. There's lots of these little stick things that you put in. They're That's just the rubber. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you just pop those in the end there. Um, they, they're really, I actually find them very useful when I'm drawing because you don't rub out all the stuff, which is very frustrating if you've spent a long time drawing it and you've got a little mistake you want to rub out and it rubs these big clumpy rubbers rub out too much. But yes, yeah, so very good. You can get them on Amazon. Um, that's why I got mine, but you can get them. I saw them in the range. I was there the other day and they were in the range and you can get them in. The, all the craft shops probably do their own version. Right, let's pop the next one in. So this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's not really. So we're going to pop in the box first, this bit here. So it starts at the bottom here, number six. You draw yourself a line across the page. So I go to number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> Cross. And then go back to the middle here and go up three and draw yourself a line across. One, two, three. And then we're going to use the ninth point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then draw yourself a line down and that will give you your box you're going to work from to create the shape of your pumpkin. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Lots of counting on this. Quick. <clears throat> I'll try and make sure your box is straight. My box is down. I'm so used to just it. Right. Debbie, it's yeah. Christina. Yes, is it, is it possible to move the page over? Ah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I can see it I now. I just realised that when I was looking up. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, thank you. You're welcome, sorry. I seem to push things out of the way when I'm working. Yeah, so that's up three and across six down and across and then at your ninth point here on this side just draw yourself a line down and you'll get yourself a box once you've got that box i started my one here at about the one centimeter <laughs> and i started this is why we laugh i should laugh it's very juvenile <laughs> pardon you julie <laughs> Oh dear, sorry. Um, and uh, this one, this one down here, you start at the three and a half. 
approximately, just to get you, so it just basically sits behind the other one. So if yours is slightly different, it doesn't really matter. It just gives you a rough idea of where to start it. And this is kind of like an egg shape one really. With a <laughs> flat bottom. That's painful. Once you've got your um, egg shape on there, your pattern, you can actually rub out those square lines because they have in the way of all that you've got going on there. You don't need them anymore. <laughs> I'll stick in a bigger rubber, make some noise. Right, there we go. How's everyone doing? Have we got three on there? I'm just going to come to see how you're doing. Ross, are you all right? Swing a ruler around. <laughs> Lily, did you catch up? Yeah, cool. Right, let's get the next one on. So, we're going to get the small one on, and the same thing again. We'll start at the two. Down here, draw yourself a line right across. And the seven, draw yourself a line right across. Mm -hmm. Just go to the two. Draw us, obviously, you don't need to go through. Well, you would, this one sits here, so you can draw yourself a very faint line across. At the second point, how do I draw the right line? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That must be the eighth point. Just sit slightly low below that one. If it doesn't, just draw yourself a line down. I've done one right down there. And then draw yourself a box from number seven down. Number 14 okay. down. Debbie, would you yes. move it across again, please? Yeah, that way? Yeah, sorry, to the left. Better? A bit more. <laughs> that way. That's it, lovely, thank you. Okay. Are you working on an iPad or something? Or a phone? No, just on the laptop, but I've got four people down the side of my screen. Okay, I think you can so it blocks that. out. Oh, <laughs> blocks out that last That's right, all right. hand side. Because I can probably a way to get rid of them, but I don't know what it is. So. That's all right. As long as I know, that's where I've got to put it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm just Thank looking you. at my screen, and I can see where I can see. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, so do yourself a box at number seven and number fourteen. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then do yourself a pumpkin. He's a bit of a squash one. He's been sat on. You can see how he sits. Just look at the screen and do your <laughs> tiny little one. And you can rub out this line here once you've done it, because it sits behind there. Because he sits behind one there so you don't need that line on there anymore Get the light. <clears throat> That's better. right and you can rub out the box once you've got that on you don't need any of those guidelines anymore you still need the the dots that we put on originally just to put in the um pieces of the pumpkin but you can rub out all those all these boxes that you've used to draw these pumpkin shapes you can rub all those out just leave the original ones that we popped on there for the time being and then we'll probably start going into uniball pretty soon that right how are we doing everybody have we got all our little shapes on there thumbs up if you have your little round things on there <coughs> So just make sure it's all tidy now, other than the crosses that we did originally, because this is where we're going to put in the little bit on the top of the pumpkin. So we're now going to work on this part here. And as you can see, 
I'm just going to look at my view so I can see what you can see. So I started it approximately the fifth dot in <laughs> and the three and a half. And I just drew two lines up and then I drew a line across and it started at about the two. So you've got, you get this box here on there and then you can just pop this little thing on. You can see where it fits on the page. It goes all the way to the top. You can do your own, own little quirkiness on top of that. Uh, in my painting, it's just got these thing going off there. So I'll let you freewheel it a little bit up there. That's just the enlarged version. Don't draw one out in the sky over there. That's just so you can see a little bit better. So start at the one, two, three, four, five, fifth one. Up to draw yourself a little box. And then the width is about, you start that at about the two and a half point one, two. So you should have a little box that looks something like that on there. And then you can work with your <coughs> shape thing to go up there. So just look at the screen there once you've got your little box on and draw that little pointy thing on top of the pumpkin. It's a stalk. And you can draw how yours how you like. This is your version. So you can copy mine or you can do something slightly different. It doesn't matter. You put your little stamp on it. Um, and you will start putting the stuff into a uni ball. So if you've got yours ready or haven't, let's get it ready. <clears throat> you need that. Shall we rub that little square out? Yeah, well, if you've done that, you don't need that square. That was just a little bit of guidance there. <clears throat> And we're going to be uni balling. Okay, so you can still see it here. Right. Now we're going to go in and pop. So obviously we're not working on these pumpkins. We're working on that pumpkin. And you can see where it sits. Now, I'm going to say go into uni ball. But just be very careful the lines that hit this little one down here at the moment. Because obviously you've still got to put his little wiggly bits in. So for me, I will come up almost to that point. And then just draw the outside. So you create your pumpkin how you like inside there. They're little bumps and lumps. So you can copy what I've got on the screen there. And you can put it and you can go over it with Uniball and you can tidy it up basically. So you can work on that one. So you, if you're not confident, do it in pencil first and then go over it with your Uniball. But we're going to start Uniball in each one as we go along. Just be careful of that one that butts up to it because then once the uniball's on there, you can't rub it out. And we don't need any of that once you ink that in. Some of the white stripes will get that. Those guidelines that we put on initially, the center ones, we don't need those anymore. They can actually come off as well. So we'll start to create our pumpkins. So you can do yours if slightly different. This one I've done different. So I've just popped that on my one there. And I've got all this mess going on. So I'm actually gonna get rid of those lines. We don't need those lines anymore. Just keep your circles, that's all you need. So I'm just gonna tidy that up. And then I'm gonna go in with my uni ball. That's why I'm happy with it all. You can tidy it up once we've done the uniform as well. Just as for me, I, I get confused. So many lines everywhere. It's too many lines. I like to get rid of some of them. Mind you, I do make myself difficult, life difficult by doing so many lines just to draw a circle. <laughs> I must have about six lines to draw one circle. So just look at the screen there and pop yours on and then go over it with your. Uniball. I'm assuming everyone's got uniball. You need if you don't have a uniball, you need something that's waterproof. If you don't have a waterproof pen, don't use a pen <laughs> because we are going to go in with paint and the paint will ruin your um it will the paint will spread anything that's not waterproof. So I'm just gonna go in my uniball now. Draw in my pumpkin. 
I'll get my light right today. Mm. So what are children doing trick-or-treating this year? Are they trick-or-treating? Well, they obviously can't, can they? Just going to... We say I won't have to buy sweets that I don't eat. I think my dog scare away half the children. <laughs> Poor old things. So are we in tier two yet or anything? I'll keep seeing stuff on Facebook. Does anyone know what we're up into at the moment? <laughs> Laurie, you'll come, come back to a strange place in Scotland. <laughs> We're still tier one. We're still tier one, good. I'm going to see my dad. I'll tell you, everything's changing here. Is it? Bizarre, yeah. What are they doing there? Well, you can't have any, you can buy trolley loads of alcohol in the supermarket and bring it back to the apartment, but you can't even have a drink during the day with a meal in a restaurant. Oh, okay. Oh. Really? Yeah. You can if you sit outside in the rain. <laughs> and it is, it is quite raining where you are. <laughs> uh, yes. Wow. Okay, the things to come then down here then, I guess. I'm just going up to North to see my dad before they shut us all down. <laughs> I'm like escaping to see him before um, they close us all down. Mind you, my daughter's at Ipswich Hospital at the moment, and she said it's they're COVID free, not one COVID case, which I thought was quite um, interesting. There are people who do live in Ipswich, <laughs> even though it's the middle of uh, nowhere. So once you've got your um, pumpkin how you want it, so just be careful the, the ink bits that you do up to the the other pumpkin we haven't filled in yet. I've kind of left mine about half a centimetre off that circle so I can kind of sort it out once I do the other one. Um, mind you, it sounds like it's changing quite rapidly, so I guess things have to be done. Um, that's what I've got going on in the background there. Mine's a bit messy at the moment. I'm just going to tidy it up and get rid of the rug. I'll just, just be really careful, as, as I always say, is when you rub out your uniballs because they are full, they actually have proper ink in them and they will smudge. So just tap, tap your finger on it before you go in with the rubber, especially those electronic ones because they will literally, if it's not dry, you will have a horrible mess of gloop all over the paper. Once you're happy with your... Um, pumpkin you can rub out the pencil marks and you should just hopefully have the uniball one and you'll probably see if you've missed any bits mm. on your um big one i'm just gently rubbing out all my pencil marks at the moment background here let's try how i miss any mm. and if you've missed something like i have because I have so much pencil on mine. I do like to have a draw, get a bit carried away. And then as you can see on the, the light source on this is coming from the right hand side, like it is on my screen actually, and that way. So as you can see, I've drawn a few darker lines with my uniball on there, a little bit thicker, um, just to keep that. A lot of you are actually starting to pick that up on um, your pictures, which is actually really wonderful because that is what really punches a picture out. If you can get the light source going on it. And if you haven't got, if you're, you've got a picture you want to paint or something, or you, you've got a picture of anything really, animal, if there isn't one, because it's a cloudy day, make one up. <laughs> It just makes it look a lot nicer if it's got, that's what all us artists do. If we want to make it punch out, even if there is no light source, and you'll be lucky if you get a nice sunshiny light source in any pictures at the moment in the UK. Um, even in the autumn, really, you can just make one up and just 
as long as you keep it consistent. And as, as I told you before, I tend to do a little picture of a sun in the corner. So it reminds me of where my light source is coming from. So in the background, I've done mine. So he's all tidy. He's not, and he's not, and he's not, obviously. Um, but that one is. Let me have a look. How's everyone doing? Debbie, is there is there a gap in that far left one at the bottom intentionally? This far, one? No, far left. Uh, yeah. No, it's probably because I because well, I oh, do these instructions. That's okay. It's just that's your template to put in your um, next pumpkin. So that is not that won't be your actual pumpkin. That's just a circle that you'll pop it in. Okay. Yeah, I have to draw these instructions about 15 times. So sometimes <laughs> I do miss bits off. <laughs> and I actually realise that sometimes when I'm doing it. So let me know when you have got that first one on and you're happy with all the little frilly bits that you've got on there. Thumbs up, you've got your first one on and you're bored. I'm ready to rock and roll. <coughs> Laura, are you keeping up with the Wi-Fi up, <clears throat> up there? Cool. Good, good. At the moment. Oh, you're a bit wobbly. No. <laughs> we might talk to you and might lose it. <laughs> right, let me go. <clears throat> right. We're going to put in <clears throat> the stalks, basically, of pumpkin number two and these little leaves. So we are at the moment going to be doing this part here and then the little leaf at the bottom there is what we're working on at the moment. So if you go across the top of your little circle you've got and draw yourself a line and then draw yourself, come down about two and a half centimeters and draw yourself <laughs> another line. Take this ruler off here. So from the top of your top of your circle, draw yourself a line across, and then come down about two and a half centimeters, and draw yourself another line. That just gives you the um, parameters to draw this pumpkin. Now I would say this stalk. Sorry. Now, if you look at the screen there, you can see where it starts. This circle here starts approximately where that pumpkin ends there, approximately, yeah. And it goes at an angle, not 90 degrees, it's not vertical, it's not horizontal, it sits about 45 degrees. So if you wanna get that right on a piece of paper, you just get your pencil and that's vertical, and that's horizontal, and you do it halfway in between. And you just put your finger there and you just draw yourself a line and you've got an approximate idea of which direction to put it in. So you've got that on screen there. Just do the stalk first. Um, and then once you've done that, you can see where this little leaf sits here, just literally sits on the bottom um, of the pumpkin. Doesn't matter where it goes. Uh, you just look at the screen and put yours where you would like to put it. So I'm just gonna draw myself a line, <coughs> draw myself a line down. I'm gonna start my circle. And I'm gonna take my pencil out on the page, <clears throat> do about a 90 degree, 45 degree angle. Just draw a line up and I've got a little stick to work from and then I'll draw what I can see on the screen there as regards my uh, pumpkin stalk. You can make yours more flowery and ornate, these funny little things that come off that we don't mind. It's your pumpkin. So I've got the, so I've got the little stalk on mine, I just popped his on and I'm going to go put the flower on down below. Leave, sorry, down below here. I can hear Julie's rubbing away. <laughs> Julie, we can hear when you're rubbing. <laughs> sorry, it That's seems right. to have itself somehow without me making me laugh. Sorry, <laughs> we can hear what you're up to. <laughs> <laughs> so once you're happy with um your stalk and your actually no we'll put you we'll put the um little bits on as well and then you can 
So once you've done your stalk and your flower, you can put your pumpkin on, you can, and then you can uniborn them as we did the other one. So you've still got the stalk on there and you've got that bit, so you can pop those all on. You can see how it all sits at about 45 degree angle, even the top of the pumpkin, it's not that way. We're not sits. drawing any boxes for the flower, are we? No, no, you can just free will that one. I'll let you free will that, Sarah. Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll free will in some of it. Don't panic. I've just you've got all the information on there before we move to the next one. That's why I've done it. Because I want you to realise that the pumpkin itself, when you start putting its little bumps on, they are at a 45 degree angle, the same as the stalk, not flat like the first one you did. You slightly turned on its side. So just bear that in mind. If you're worried, if you're worried about getting it wrong, just draw yourself. I will personally get my river. I'll draw myself a line across underneath like that. And I know that I can work off that angle. Do little, they're like little two little bottoms, aren't they? Cheeks, cheeky bottoms. So just draw yours. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Just something similar. Looks like a pumpkin, hopefully. Just come out from that middle. So, is your, Sarah, is your son all right now? If he had symptoms? Yeah, he's all fine now. Just it seemed to go away after two days. So, Bless him. so yeah, he's all, he's all good. Thank did you. you have a postal one or did he go somewhere? No, I'm Reading Uni. You've got um, a place now. Okay. Really quick. So, I yeah. went to, um, yeah, Amy says her uni, they all go in. With, if you have to go in, they go in really quick. And, They've got, I think they're getting the unis actually under control now, as in you can get a test really, really quickly, which is good because that's what they need. And also remember where the light source is coming from, from the right, as you can see on mine here, we have got the darker bits on there. Put some around there and then you can join up your bigger one to your little one once you've got him on there, because you would have had possibly shorter lines that you needed to, to join up. So once you're happy with what you've got on there, I've got, this is what I've got on the screen at the moment. So I've got a pumpkin, I've drawn my flowers on. And see, I've got a shorter line there. So once I've uniballed my smaller one in, I'll join him up to the, to the bigger one so they can be buddies. So I worked off this line, I just drew a line across there. And then I worked, that gives me the 45 degree angle to work off. Do he's got kind of the two little bum cheeks at the front there? I reckon that's how I'll describe this front bit here. Once you've got those two on here, the rest of them are really easy to do. So work off those two at the front there. So I would, as I said, put yourself a line on like that. It's about a 45 degree angle. Then do these two first. Work off these two. They look like two little bottoms. And then just work off those. And then join them up with your. Um, I'll go back to the original drawing and you can see the cut of the model. And then you can go in with Uniball once you're happy with what you've got. And you can see where the light's coming from, and you can put some dark bits on there. You can choose where they go, really. I've just chosen a few little bits underneath there. You can use all the flower in the leaves, sorry, in as well. Just make make it because I know I give you I gave you a round shape. Just make sure it's a nice little pumpkin shape. If you go outside the circle, it doesn't matter that they were just there for a, a rough guide. So you so you kind of place everything on the page or get everything on the page. I always do that when I'm planning pictures. It's um sometimes I'll just draw rough shapes so I can plan my page because there's nothing more frustrating than doing this wonderful drawing and then you can't get the rest of it in and that's so frustrating and then you have to start again so always plan your page when you're drawing something and I would say if you are doing a painting um, 
always do a really good drawing to go with it. And then use that drawing to create your painting. Because then you can create more paintings. You can create a summer one, a winter one. All right, just doing my leaves. Do too many pencil lines. I've got lots of other now to do here. So I'm just buddying up my big one to my little one because my lines are a little bit short. Are we supposed to be uniballing this now? Yes, Sorry. once you once you're happy with that pumpkin like that, you can go in and uniball him. Um, this is what I've got at the moment. I've still got to tidy up all the pencils or marks on there. Um, and once you've tied up the pencil marks, you might see some bits that you've missed. Yes, but don't forget the little dark bits on there as well. We'll just work, just make sure it's dry before you start rubbing out. As I said before, you are working with proper ink, it will smudge if it is not dry. So just gently, gently. And then you'll probably find out bits you missed, like I have missed. Yes, that. Uh, that's what I've got. I just need to tidy up that pencil line. So yeah, basically these two, this one here and this one here, needs to be uniboard. So we're gonna work along there. I was debating to union boil at the end, but I decided actually we can do that. We can do this one as we go along. It's not too little sections on this one. You don't have to use the uniball at all. It's just how I do things. I like it. You can stick it that. Just take your time getting it right. Has anyone had a half term or anything? Has everyone been, Laura's up in Scotland. I know she's on holiday. Karen's getting distracted. <laughs> you got help there, Karen. And I've yeah, got the same but I've done mine, so You're she's right. distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? <laughs> she won't like being on video. I saw you. You're hide now. I saw you. <laughs> Who's that? Who is it anyway? That's my daughter. What's her name? Emily. Hi, Emily. Lovely to see you. If not briefly. <laughs> She'll hide now. Oh, bless her. <laughs> Thumbs up if you have got that on there and we're all ready to rock and roll. No hurry if you haven't. Cool, cool. I'm just watching. I think I've drawn the pumpkin across my stalk, which is a bit silly with me. That's right. You might be able to paint it out with paint. I won't yeah. worry, Sarah. Absolutely don't worry. We can hide a multitude of sins with paint. <laughs> bit of dark paint. Right, let's get the next one on. Move him over so you can all see. Right, the next one, you've got the circle, which is the red bit. This is the one we're working on. And this has got, the stalk on it is about one and a half centimetres below it. So just draw yourself, we can just draw down from the top here, one and a half centimetres, just draw yourself a line across, faintly. And then they, you can work, it's in the middle, bang in the middle. 
and you can see where it goes off to the side. Don't worry about the leaves at the moment, just do the top bit there and get the pumpkin in, as you can see on the screen there. So it's about one and a half centimetres. Sorry, one and a half centimetres below. Oh, the top of the pumpkin. Yeah. So there, yeah. and then come down one and a half centimetres. And then just draw yourself a line across. And then just work off that, basically. That'll be the way your position of your stalk is. And it is bang in the middle. Just draw yourself a stalk there. Goes round off to the right there. You can do swirly bits. You can do what you like. There. And then once you're happy with the stalk, you can put a little pumpkin. I always work on these front bits when I do it first and then work, work round the back. So I'll come off these two here, two front ones. Because they're the ones that people will look at first. They won't look at the back ones. And just work off those. Work your way around. Just make sure it's nice and round. Does have to look exactly like mine on screen? The one I've got going on the back here is different to the one I've done on there. They change every time I do them. I'm going to zoom that circle approximately. And you've got some like, I would call them, looks like they look like oranges, don't they? And they can go outside the circle you've drawn. It's just the guide, really. Doesn't have to sit exactly inside there. Now, once you've um, got your pumpkin in, your pencil, you can see where this little leaf section comes off, just at the bottom of the pumpkin. And that is about 45 degree angle that way, really, going off to the corner of the page. It literally goes off, literally, if you put your ruler, it goes off to the corner of the page. Draw yourself a line out, you can see where it, I've ended mine, doesn't matter where you end it, yours really, um, and then pop some little leaves on there. It could be different to mine, I'm quite happy for it to be different. You can put your little artistic stamp on it. You can do some swirly ones, you can do some pointed ones, you don't have to do little flat ones like I've done. And then once you're, um, you've got all your bits and pieces on, you can go over it uh, with your uniform once you've got these leaves on as well. Otherwise you'll end up drawing over these ones. But if you want to do more fancy leaves like that one, you can do. I need that for you to decide. So I've got my, what I've got in the background there, I've got my pencil on. Um, and now I'm gonna go in and go over it with the uniform. So you can, once you've got your, if you want to change it, you can always change it when you're uniforming. Just remember the light's always coming from the, on this picture, it's coming from the right hand side, which will be more important in a little bit once we start putting the paint on. Just remember you've got this other pumpkin to put in this little final little one so just leave about um, a half a centimeter when you're going to roll off it just in case you have to adjust make any adjustments when it meets up and then do some dark bits so where you've got the dark coming and the light hitting it as you can see on the screen there behind the pumpkin Leaves on. Yes, they're just circles basically. Who's done any pumpkins? I don't have any children to do that anymore with. It's quite boring. <laughs> Mine won't play. <laughs> My son's not interested at all in pumpkin doing. I did them with the cubs. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah. Um... And we made some great ones, but um, mine's already disintegrated. I had it outside like two weeks before Halloween and everybody was looking at me as if I was mental. <laughs> and um, and now it's all... Uh, Has it yeah, got the frost all... on it? No, 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 it just rotted. So, oh. Yeah. What did you do on it, Sarah? I just did, um, you know, 
some jaggy teeth and uh, eyes and things. Yeah, it was good. Nice. So the, ki the kids did some great ones. We had all manner of things. Yeah, they've got um, such good imaginations to them. Yeah, yeah, they were very, very good. Good fun. Oh, I miss all that. Yeah, then that's nice. Do you make pumpkin cake out of the? I used to make pumpkin cake out of the bits they scooped out the middle. And we fed them to the squirrels. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't know what. No, what could you do the pips? I think we did something. With, we might have done that with the pips. We did some of the the actual pumpkin. I think I had a carrot to it as well. You know, enough. Pumpkin, cinnamon, and something. I found something on the internet. The cats liked it as well. I don't know what's about my cooking, really. But <laughs> yeah, my sister lives in America. They go really OTT at all this kind of. So one of my colleagues has already got her Christmas trees up, and she's yeah. got five of them. Oh my God! What? Oh. They live, she lives in the UK. No, in the US. Oh, and she's got her Christmas tree up already. She's got five Christmas trees up already. Where on earth she put five um, Christmas trees? In every single room of the house. Oh, my God. And they're all decorated differently. No. Wow. So, yeah. That is dedication. They're, they're just crazy over there. Yeah, I, I, I lived over there for two years in Colorado. And they have the most wonderful decorations, I must admit. And they're not expensive at all. Really silly. We did bring a load home. Um, the children were only little. Amy was, well, Luke was born, literally born. I had to wait to have him before I could go out there. Um, so he doesn't remember any of what bless him. He was only two when we came back. Amy must have been three, she turned three. She remembers some of it. Lovely place, it was in Colorado. So we had snow every five minutes, basically, which was lovely to start with. But once you'd been living there, you'd just think, oh my God, really? You wake up in the morning and think, oh, God. And it, it, was, it was law that you had to um, clear the um, pavement of snow outside your house so the school kids could get to school. School kids had to walk to school. So um, if my husband was well in business, I used to have to get my little son, who was only a baby, to start my car up and sit him in there <laughs> in a warm car while he watched me. <laughs> with a big snow shovel, shovel the snow off the path so the children could get to school, otherwise they find you. They used to find you if you didn't cut your grass as well. Funny. Yeah, that was some, um, we didn't have a double garage. That was my husband's mistake of not, mistake of not renting a house with a double garage because I could have just driven in. All my friends used to just drive into the garage. But, their, front, their roads never closed and you could go anywhere. I never had a four wheel drive. I just had one of these great, of these like mini bus things. And it never went off the road because I used to come out and they used to de-ice the roads about two in the morning because I used to see the trucks while I was feeding my son. You wake up in the morning and the roads would be clear so you could go off to work. Amazing. But then your job was to clear the um, paths for the children to get to school. Otherwise, no one would go to school if it snowed, because it snowed literally every three days. <laughs> every week, <laughs> it just snowed. <laughs> and my children, bless them, we used to have people go over and stay, and they go, oh, can we go out to play in the snow? And then we go, do we have to? <laughs> I had enough snow. <laughs> Debbie? Yes? Um, I'm from Vermont. I was oh. born in Vermont. On Christmas Eve, uh, my parents' engine block froze. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, yeah. We, we had it so cold in Colorado. My husband's car wouldn't start and we had ice inside our windows. Um, that was really, really, that it, was... It, it is lovely, but I'm glad I'm not there anymore. I'm no, here. it gets a bit wearing after a while. It looks beautiful. But when you actually have to go out with two children that are very small and you just, well, all you want to do is pop to shops and you've got to get all a foot of snow off your car before you can even get out the door. Um, it does become very wearing. But I mean, to get everywhere, uh, uh, to be fair, I never had any problems once I got my car off the driveway to get anywhere because the roads were always clear, the supermarkets were always clear. Um, it was never a problem. We never used to, did we ever go up the mountains? No, we never went up in the mountains when it was winter. Um, yeah, it's harsh conditions, it's cold, really. And it's dry, it's a different, snow's different there. It's, um, was the same in Vermont? It was um, powdery. There was no, there's no oxygen to put it because it'd be a mile above sea level. 
and uh, it doesn't stick together very well. It's weirder stuff. It's completely different. Snow, strange. Debbie, you wear about four or five jackets in the UK. So how many did you wear when you were? I wore quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, I used to stay in my car a lot. Really, I don't think I don't remember other than having to go out and play with the children's snow, actually even being out with it, to be fair. Uh, I think I had my ski coat on most of the time. I don't know what I wore on my feet. But it, we once had, because we would have, in the Colorado, it would be really hot, or it would be, I'm going to put the next page on in a second, sorry. Really hot or really cold. And once we had rain and uh, my children thought I was mad because I'm like, come on, in the car. We're going out. And they're like, why? I said, it's raining. It never rained. It never rained in Colorado. It would either snow because it was cold or it would be really, really hot. So um, I dragged my children out so we could go walking around in the rain. It was beautiful. Right. I'm going to put number four on. I haven't broken him down very much because he is a tiny little pumpkin to fit in a tiny little box. And I wanted you to be a little freewheelie because I like you to freewheel on some of it so I can see what you're up to. If you want any measurements, that's about a centimetre below there. And you can work on this little stalk up here and give him leaves like that, or you can just give him wispy bits like that. I really don't mind what you do with him. Um, as you can see, it's the same principle as the others, work off the front. So get his little stalk on first. So draw yourself a little marker if you want, about a centimetre below your little circle, your line across. And then that's the same, it comes off the middle, but it goes off slightly. You just need to make sure it doesn't go over your other one. You can angle it how you like. And just take that up to create some space to pop some little fancy leaves on. Yes, yeah, so I, I actually really love living. I did actually really like the um, Colorado lifestyle. It's very outdoorsy. Um, Beautiful place to live. We were used to, we were literally an hour's drive when we were into the mountains. Um, I didn't go skiing. I have skied, but I, the kids were so little. My husband went skiing. I just stayed at home. I really couldn't face going out. It was too cold. <laughs> I didn't want to get out. Um, so I have many kids. But we used to take people on little hikes up into the mountains. It's beautiful. And we used to go camping. The kids love the camping. And America actually, our campsites here are quite tame. We have like little squares where you put pitch a tent and da da da. In America, you just go put it in the field and well, literally up in the mountains. You have toilet blocks, which are nowhere near as posh as our ones. Um, and there'd be elk wandering around your campsite. And you'd have to put all your pots and pans away in case the bears came through. And my son was only little, so he was in a travel cot in the tent, and I used to be terrified. I used to wake up in the night just to check he was there. I know, because all there is is a piece of material between us and the bears. Um, and there were bears. You had to put away all your food in your car, anything that had food touching on it. No food in the tent. Because they would be on the other side of the tent Bless them. Unaware that bears can put their paws through the tent and take you. But actually, what took kids in Colorado more than bears was mountain lions. They'd run off with young children. And my son was about that age. So we used to dress him in a, we had a bright yellow coat and we used to run through the woods. Because there used to be pictures of people to take pictures of of their families and in the background you could see all the mountain lines. I can't say we saw anything like that. We didn't even see a wild bear, but there was a bear wandering through Boulder once that they had to persuade to disappear off back into the mountain. It's a nice place. I guess because they had to. Oh, we keep going.
Sound keeps going. Yeah, I think we've lost Debbie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we lost you, Debbie. We lost you then. Yeah, did you lose me? It just said unstable. Have you got me back now? Yes. Oh, good. So I saw I've been doing behind the scenes there. I'm just going to go over mine with the uni ball now. Yeah, it just came up on a message on my screen, unstable internet. I don't know why. We've all had strict instructions to stay off the internet. So I'm just going to go over mine with the uni ball now. If you have done all this, you can tidy up this. So we're just going to go and put some leaves on the far side in a little bit and then we're ready to rock and roll. So if you are waiting, mm -hmm. um, you can just tidy up all your pencil. Um, you can start to get your paints ready. We will need a wax candle or a wax crayon if you've got one of those art ones, wax resist crayons. We'll put that on before we start painting. But this is where you can just put on what you like. You can put on leaves or you can do what you like, really. Some squiggly bits. Use your imagination. Doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm just going on that. Quite happy for you to just do your own thing. I really don't mind. Lots of you do. And actually, it's really nice to see different ways of doing things. I'm just going to screw in that leaf there. Just going over one with my ball. Just remember where the light's coming from, right hand side. So everything on the left is dark. Sure. And then you, once you've done your uniball, and then you can actually join your other pumpkin up if you've left a bit of a gap. I left a bit of gap in mine. Just going to rub it out with a pencil, just make sure it's dry. Yeah, we used to have storms. We had such a storm once. I went out, because we had a hailstorm, and I swear the hailstorms were as big as golf balls. They actually dented all our cars, all the cars in the street, everyone's cars got dented, my car roof got dented, my husband's car got really dented. Um, it ruined all the roofs, they had to be replaced, because they have funny roofs out there, they have like shed roof material, it's their roofs, they're in Colorado, I don't know why, they're not proper tiles. I guess they can't hold their weight, um, the wooden houses, but, you have um, um, shed the tiles made of shed material, roofing material, funny stuff. Had all those replaced. They it ripped, it was about May time, it ripped all the leaves off the trees. It was quite scary, actually. We didn't have any tornadoes or anything. It went that far over. Right, I'm going to slide something on here now, the ones that are finished. And I don't want everyone to be scared. Now, <laughs> um, this part here. So basically, we're going to just put on this bit here in the picture. These little leaves and this little pumpkin flower and these little flowers. So you can just do what you like, really. I don't, you don't have to copy mine exactly. This red line here is just so you can see the section that we're working on there. So just pop those in. If you're not finished, you can still see the other pumpkin there. And as you can see, I put little squiggles on the bottom, but you don't have to do that at all. So just put what you like in the corner there, really. Is it really hot in Vermont then as well? I'm trying to think where it is. Vermont is right next to New York and 
Massachusetts. Okay, so and it does get really hot in the summer and really cold in the winter. You had basically the kind of seasons like we had then. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, it's definitely all the seasons. Yeah, it was. Uh, quite we, did, we didn't get rain though. Did you get rain? No, but I moved to Washington State when I was ten, and I got plenty of rain there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we never got rain in Colorado, and I felt it, it was so weird. I actually missed it. Believe it or not, it was. I said it was either snow, full on snow, or it was sun, really, really hot, 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 hot sun. Strange. You wouldn't think Colorado would be like that, but it was. Which was, it was nice. Summers were very stormy, actually. You'd have a storm every so often, which was a bit frightening. The kids loved it. The play parks were lovely over there. And they let, they let my daughter, when, you know, they'd make cards, like Mother's Day cards, like we have mum. They used to let my daughter put mum. <laughs> Not mum. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind. <laughs> And they were funny once because it was really fun. They, I picked Amy up from school and they, they were laughing. I said, what's wrong? And they said, oh, we were trying to find out what Amy wanted. She wanted help turning on the, I'm like, turning on something. I said, what? She said, well, she kept going on about a tap. We don't know what a tap is. We didn't know what a tap was. So I said, well, what do you call it? They called a tap a faucet. I didn't know that. So my poor daughter was standing there, so we need help with the tap. And they're like, what's a tap? <laughs> so they have strange names. I just thought we were a bit strained, I suppose. I used to love the, the um, garage sales. They were such fun. So I'm just drawing my flowers on while I'm talking to you and just some squiggly bits. I quite like these little squiggly bits that comes out from the pumpkins. Add a few more. Once you've got your flowers and your squiggly bits, you just go over them with your uniball like we have been to make them permanent on there. Lived in Azerbaijan as well. That was pre-children, though. That's nothing like it is now. But seven years out of Russia, they just got independence. That was quite interesting. On the Armenian border. We used to go up into the Caucasus Mountains. This is where my husband used to work for a tobacco company. They used to buy the tobacco off the locals. And they used to make Russian cigarettes for the Russian market. Rothmans and all that used to be out there making cigarettes. This is a long time ago. My children are 20. <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting experience. Well, There was nothing like it is now. I mean, they have a nice posh hotel. This looks like Dubai now. And we had this electricity, our electricity supplies disappear every so often. We had this button that connected to the tram lines. And so if our electricity went, we just flicked the switch and it just ran off the tram lines. Beautiful buildings though. We had, we were to this apartment, massive high buildings, I think built in the 17, 1800s. Because it had oil, it's always had oil. We weren't there for the oil. We were coming to all for the oil. It was just in the infancy, it was very interesting. Right, I've done mine. Stuck mine on in the corner there. I've uniboard them. Slightly different to what I've got on the screen. I've just added a few and taken a few out. So you get to freewheel a little bit. I like to have a little bit of a freewheel. I just want to see how you go about painting this. And I know what I've got to do with my painting tutorial for you. I haven't forgotten I've got to do it. Oh, 
thought, oh, that's kind of waiting. You can get your, start to get your paper ready if you need a wax. Tell you what colours I've used in a bit. Let me see how you're all doing. If you have done that, thumbs up. Don't worry if you haven't. And if you have done it, you can start getting your stuff ready. You'll need your kitchen towel. You'll need your waxing, you need a pot of water. Colors. Oh, I did. I will ask you colors. Four colors. I'll tell you in a minute. So when you have done your picture, let me know. If you have done it, you can start getting your plates ready. You will need your candle. I have a big thing like that or a pencil thingy, either either will work just as good. Yeah, and I've got all these paintbrushes and I have Two favorites. I have a whole pot of paintbrushes. Look, all those. But I barely work with two. I don't like working with these two. They do what I need to do. On the very occasion, you go to a very thin one. So just let me know when you are ready to. Um, I'm just going to swap this over one. So we've got to put some wax resist on. Now we're ready to rock and roll. What are you doing? Are you drawing your paper? <laughs> what have you done? I still need to get um pencil off. Oh, okay. And I'm trying not to smudge it. Dab it with your finger. You if you dab it with your finger, should be able to tell. It dries quite quickly. Yeah, good. As you want, to, if you want to just check your ink's dry, just dab it with your finger. I do, the trouble is I'm very enthusiastic getting it, getting the pencil off. And so that's why I smudge it. That's why I just always say be really careful smudging it. You will need your wax thingy this, this is the next stage and then we're gonna go into the paints. So you can get your paints ready. Um, I'll tell you what colors I used in a minute if you want to know. My usual phthalo blue, burnt sienna. These are very autumnly colors orange and cadmium yellow. So they look very rusty in your paint palette. Um, and you can see that there. We'll lift that up. That um, rusty colour there. Orange. Cadmium yellow is kind of more of a orangey yellow. So any auto colours really if you haven't got the exact colours that I said. So you want me to do their wax resist on the pieces of paper. Give me your thumbs up if you are ready. Don't worry if you're not. Cool. So if you see in the picture here. She's gonna go Sorry, to Debbie, could you just mention the colours again, please? Yeah, I will do that in a second anyway, but they are phalo blue, 
burnt sienna, an orange, and a cadmium yellow. So as you can see, the, when we talked about the light before, it's coming from the right-hand side. And all these little marks on here are from this. So you're going to go into your picture. I'm just going to draw yourself lines where you do not want the paint to go. I think down here, I just drew some down here. Just remember where you put it, you can't get it off. And the biggest one, it's quite nice for the biggest one to have these two here. So what I'm going to do on mine is I've got my wax thingy that needs to be sharpened, that's fine. And I'm just going to, you won't be able to see where it is. Unless you turn it to the light, you'll be able to see it slightly. And I'm just going to go around there where the light would hit the pumpkin normally. And I'm just going to do a little line there and some over there. And back there. And then I'm going to work down to this one main lights on this side here so i'm just going to give it quite a lot of candle on that bit there and just go across don't have to do all of it some of it you can just leave and paint and go to that one there where the light mainly hits it and then this little one down here you can get to it Can we see the color one as well again? Yeah, sure. There we go. That might help you. So these bits here are not wax, um, here are not wax resist. I've just not painted them the same with that there, but mainly get the front of them. So when the light's hitting from the right hand side. Does that help you better? Just let me know when you've got your wax just on because then we will go into our paint and we'll just work from right over. To left once we put the background colour on, which would be our yellow. I always put the background on first, but if you prefer it not to go on first, that's your decision. I, I work best like that because then I can get the colours to go in. Laura, we've got a bit of flat going on there. Are you going to do it today? Sorry? I've got a bit of splatting going on, look. It's not your house. Uh, not using away. paint. I haven't got enough, no, watercolour pencils, I'm afraid, tonight. Oh, wait. <laughs> haven't got enough paint with me. And it's not your house, you could splat away. I know, but I've got no wax crayon either. Forgot my wax crayon. Oh, no, you need to take your box. Well, you'll get it on the plane. Oh, yeah, what on the plane? <laughs> no wonder we docked to Laura going on the plane with that big box. <laughs> yeah. Right, give me a thumbs up when you have got your um, wax candle on there, and then I can know I can get the paints out. Don't overthink it, don't do too much because you can always leave it with your paintbrush. You don't have to use it, it's just a quick way to, just a handy little one if you've got lots of paint to put on. Right, out of the way. So colours, everyone got the colours? So, you know, oranges and this is kind of blue. This is your phthalo blue with some orange. It makes the greeny colours. Um, you don't have to do yours that colour. You can do them all orange if you like. I really don't mind. So what we're going to do is put the background on. Now I always turn my page around when I'm doing the top part. Let me just so I can see my picture. So I'll paint upside down. If you don't want to paint upside down, you don't have to. But all I'm going to do is put water. I've got water on my brush, nothing else. I'm just going round the pumpkins and the leaves with my water. Wherever you put the water, the paint is going to go. Have a look. I'm going to try. I can see. Um, yellow. If you don't want it yellow, you don't have to do it yellow. You can do a different colour. So I'm just going in there. And just because it's wet, I've got a bit of paint on my brush. It's just following the water. It won't go anywhere 
where there's no water. And then you just, just going round. The trick is to have enough water so you can spread it about. And I have more concentration of paint near the object I'm painting. So I'll just put more on there, more around there. And then I'll just clean my brush, take off excess water with my little cloth I've got sat here, and I'll just tease it out. I don't need any more paint. You don't need much paint with watercolour. You just share the paint around a little bit. The trick is watercolour is not to put too much on. You don't need much. And then just go round. I will turn it up the other way and let it, so you can see. That is my background. Look at that dot there. And just flat, I've just got water on my brush now. I've cleaned all the paint off, take off the excess water from my dishcloth, my kitchen towel, and then I've just got water on my brush and just sort of just teasing it up like that, just gently teasing it so it fades to the page. Then we're going to do the same. So you can see my screen. Bottom is the same. It's a bit of water underneath here. I have a big brush, so it works quite quickly. Sometimes it's a good investment in a, a decent brush. And then a bit of yellow under here. And so, Pop it where I put the water. So it's underneath all the. I sort it out in a minute. I'm just putting the paint on at the moment. It doesn't have to be exactly where I want it at the moment. Just put it on the paper. So that's on there where I want it. So I'm just going to clean my brush, take off the excess water. Now I decide where exactly where I want it. Just go in with water on my brush. Spread it out a little bit more. And once I've got it all in place. Now, under the, I want to make it a little bit darker underneath the pump heads because it's sat, sat on there. You just go with a bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, sorry. And create that kind of shadow effect under there. Where they sit, sort of rusty colour, basically, you're going in with over the top of your yellow. Dark and under there because the light's coming from the right. I want it dark in there. I clean my brush, take off all the excess water. So that's why I want it. So I just need to spread it about a bit. So I've just got water on my brush now. I just want to blend that in a little bit. You can always go a little bit darker in there if you want. Just put in a little bit dark paint. And that's your bottom bit. And we're going to go into the pumpkins now. And I'll start on the big one in the middle. And it's the same again. You just go in with water. So I'm just painting round. Right, how's everybody? Let me just try check. Have we done our background? Are we ready to go into our paint pumpkins? Not yet. Is it burnt sienna we're putting on top? Uh, yeah, just under the shadows there was burnt sienna. Yeah. Shelly's banging hers away. What are you doing, Shelly? You get to splat and make mess all over your computer today. Again, I'm letting it drip down onto my, my towel. Oh, good. Well done, you. Yay. Let me know when you are ready and we'll start on with a little pumpkin. Thumbs up if you've got your background on. Don't overthink it, just a bit of yellow. Good, good. 
Good. Miranda, you all right? Yep, good, good. Hannah, how are you doing? Hannah's worst nightmare, this painting. This is good practice. <laughs> this is all good practice. So let's get on the whole water ready. Are you using water with your watercolours, Laura? Yeah, I will in a minute. Okay. Well, I'm going to start <clears throat> on this big pumpkin here. So this is the same again. We're going to go in <clears throat> with water. It's called wet on wet. Just go in with water. And I'm just painting inside there. Just that pumpkin. Not too much water. With water. And then I get my phthalo blue. Put a bit of blue on. You don't have to use these colours if you want to use orange. Feel free to. If you haven't got phthalo blue, ultramarine will work slightly differently, but it's a blue. It will work. I'm just going around back here with blue. And I'm going to build up the colour. So I'm going to clean my brush off. Put on some uh, burnt sienna. This should start to mingle and change colour and come across. And I've got my wax resist there, it won't let me paint look, see, which is what I was wanting. Just bring that down. You can always add more colour if you need to. And that's my two colours starting to work together there. I'll put some on that bit as well. So I'm just working with these three little sections here at the moment, in the same colours on my brush. Clean my brush. Got some more brown. But Sienna needs to go in there a bit more on the top there. Just let them mix a little bit, see what happens. And tease it around if I need to. Take that off, move that around. So basically, you put the walk on on and you wait to see what happens. And then you move it if you need to. So I want that darker down there. So I'm just going to get a bit of my phthalo blue. And I've got burnt umber. I'm just going to darken this bit up here. And I've just got paint on my brush here. I'm just going to blob it on. Like that. And it will just slowly but surely seep into the water. I'm just dubbing it. Look. Dub, 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 dub. I've not done anything. It will just go out into the water on its own. I don't have to do anything. Because I've got water on there, it, it does its own thing. And I'm just letting it do that. I'm just putting a bit of paint on. And just wait. You have to be patient with watercolour. And just wait and see what it does. And steer it where you want it to go. And a bit of brown on top of that one. And I'm just going to go across to the others. And add... That's you know on this one here. I've got the 
wax is just going on so it won't let me paint across. Clean my brush, a little bit of blue on there. yellow on my okay. oh, too much out. A brush. So just go around and add your colours and just build them up really as you like. And then a stalk you can just add a little bit of your burnt sienna that you've got off your brush and take that up. You've got that wax resist on there, it won't let you paint anymore on there. Right, where are we? I'm just going to get rid of that blue. So I'm going to mix these in a little bit now. So we've got like a greeny colour going now. So we've got the yellow in there. The cadmium yellow, so you've got four colours you're working with. <coughs> and then to dark it up, I'm a bit burnt umber. I want that quite dark there. Quite dark. I'm not quite happy with him. He's gonna just mix them around a bit. So browns and blues. I added a bit of yellow, <clears throat> which gives you a little bit of the green. You don't have to use any of these colours. You want to use the traditional orange one. But <clears throat> excuse me. So we're gonna go into the little one here. Here's the same again. You just put in your water. Want to be careful touching, don't go too close to the other one. Otherwise, you'll have bleed from that one. And here's orange. Here's an orange and the burnt sienna, basically. And remember where the light's coming from. Slowly build up your picture and add colours. So I use a yellow to create the lighter colours and burnt sienna. The dark colours on the orange, basically the pumpkin colour. To get the shades, you use the yellow. I'm going to be orange up front there. You're just dotting, you're just basically dobbing colours and just wait and watch them mix. They want to mix a bit, you can add in a, a different colour. And then you can add in some dark and some blend seam there at the back here. Once you've got that one on, just touch there. It's a little bit in there where it goes and you add the dark. With that white resistant there, front that I can't paint. It won't let me go next to the other one at all. A bit of burnt umber in there. Just try and keep those segments. If you need to use a bit of burnt umber, which is like a dark brown, to not lose it, by all means do. Just use whatever colours you need to use. my brush. I'm just going to blend those in. Okay. 
Um, and you've got some little leaves down there, which were like a, your yellow. You see, we're working quite a limited palette here, so that's good. You can just some autumn colours on those leaves. I just went straight over them with yellow like that, and then added a bit of shading with my burnt sienna. And it should just double in where they cross each other, and then you can fade it in your brush. Take off the excess water from your finger. And you just wait and see what it does. It doesn't quite do what you want it to do. You just flip it around a little bit. It does. And guide it, basically, with your paintbrush. I'm going to clean my brush again. And I'm just going to wait and see what happens with that one. We've got these up here to do, but I'm going to leave them for a minute because I need this to be a little bit drier. And I might dub it with my <coughs> finger. So the same thing with this one. Here it's just water. And I'm pumping number three. Just paint water. And we've had wax on there. And here's the same colours. You can put in your rusty colour first. It's like a dark colour. You can go from light to dark if you prefer. I always tend to go the other way. It doesn't really matter what you do. I'm just going to get some colour on there to start with so I know what I'm working with. Oh, that is rubber. So it's got some colour on there. So I'm going to use some orange. So just alternate between a bit of orange, burnt sienna, and if you need to have a lighter colour, go in with the Canon Yellow. They are three colours of these orange pumpkins. So I've just highlighted, I can't go there. <clears throat> so I've got the wax candle. I can't do that either. So that's mainly orange. I'm just going to darken it up with a little bit of burnt uh, sienna now. I will add some yellow in to give it. So this is burnt sienna here. I'm just giving the shadows at the bottom here. And where it sits behind this pumpkin, it'll be darker. So it's behind. And then those bits out of the light are dark. And shade there, the top there where it comes out. Little dark, little segments. Get that rubber off there. And the stalks basically the same colour you've got on your brush. Just a little bit on, wash your brush, then blend it out. That bit. I just put a bit of yellow on there as well, a bit of highlight. Like that. But you know, if you don't want to use yellow, you don't have to. I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to go on to the fourth one. So he's kind of similar to the other blue one we did. He's smaller. So just cover with water, try not to do what I just done and bleed. If you get that going, just kitchen towel. And here's just water as well. We're gonna go in with the if you're using the blue pumpkin, it's a bit of fainer blue going on again. Underneath. Then you add the cadmium yellow, which makes that kind of, if you want, the greeny effect. Eventually, so clean my brush. It's quite a strong colour, that yellow blue. <laughs> Going with a burnt sienna. And just follow it around and add it in where you want the colour. I've got the wax with this going on the front there. Hopefully, won't let me put anything there. So, I've got the colours on. Obviously, it was stripes at the moment, so I'm going to blend them in. This brush has just got water on it, and I've dried most of it off. 
I'm just going to tease it. So the paint kind of mixes on the page there. And then when it starts to get too muddy, you clean your brush. Try it off again. It's orange now. What? Put it in yellow. So the kind of mixtures of all four already, really, these pumpkins. I'll just mix them on the paint area. Really. If you don't want it blue, you just add a bit of yellow in there. Well. <clears throat> change it to green then all the leaves are like little me on our, what I did was just a bit of yellow on them then but where the shadow is on them we just had a bit of burnt sienna a bit brown and yellow mixed in And the leaves up here are the same, a bit of yellow, having yellow. Should draw them up. Just a, on the leaves, are just when I did them, I did just a base of cadmium yellow because they're basically autumn colours you're trying to create. Add another yellow on there, and then I'll just add in some colors. You just add your oranges and your pantyano, just a bit too much paint. I'm borrowed from that, let's put it on there for all the other leaves. Yeah, we've got to keep cleaning the brush. So if it starts pushing the same color around. Page, which we clean brush, and then we're going to go over to these leaves over the far side that we left by the big pumpkin. And it's the same principle again. Just paint them with not too much water first, and then go in with your um, autumn colours. You can do different autumn colours to me if you want. I was just do a base of cadmium yellow and then build it up. And now I think it looks quite nice. Add some burnt, touch it some orange, my leaves. There we go. So you can also remember the light on the leaves are coming from the right. So I just darken that side and clean my brush. I'll just put the paint on. I know it's not where I want it to be at the moment, and just gently tease it with a wet brush. Now it's going to drag too much paint. So I'll clean my brush again, dry off a little bit, and then just gently tease it. I'll clean my brush, dry it off a little bit. The same with that one. I'm just go around each one. And then that little flower painting on it. And then those little splatty things. In a second. So let's see how everyone's doing. So if you find your pumpkins too blue, you need a bit of uh, yellow in there. I'll take the blooms off. It's quite a Strange colour to work with Halo Blue. It is quite bright. I quite like it. Some people don't. You can use, you don't have to use any of that blues. Anyone got any questions? 
little painting away. I haven't done the little splatty things yet. Ask away if you need to ask away. The key is not to put too much paint on because you can always add, it's really hard to get it off and not spread it around in one color. So once you've got the water on there, let it do its thing, wait, then go in and see if you need to push it around a little bit. Because the water is great, watercolors are great, they'll actually do it for you, they'll start to seep. How are you doing, Laura, with your pencils? Good, good. Is your hubby not doing it? You put him on the balcony? Hi, Steve. Hello, Steve. <laughs> Anyone got any questions? We're all all right. I know it's hard to paint and talk. Just remember, water on. And then you don't have, it doesn't have to be exactly where you need it. Clean your brush, take off the excess water off your brush with your finger if you need to. I quite often do that. And then poke it around. And then once you get getting too much paint on your brush, clean it again. Watercolors, you have to keep cleaning, painting, cleaning, painting. It's really crucial to keep cleaning your brush. Otherwise, when you push it around, um, you just get mud. I said I've only used four colours, the autumn colours. And if you use that blue, it's quite intense. And if you find it's too blue, add a bit of the cadmium yellow and it'll it'll make it more of a greeny this kind of colour. And I just wait and see what happens. You can always add a little bit more in a little bit after that. Shelley did that the other week. You added a little bit more, didn't you, mate? Yeah. 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 Sometimes you have to walk away from it and then go in the morning, oh, yeah, I need to add a little bit more. The key is water, not too much colour. Oh, let me see what you've been up to. Oh, Laura, I like that. That's really good. Wow, mate. That's come all the way from Scotland. I've got two people in Scotland today on Art Club. <laughs> wow, good, love that. Laura's used purple for her pumpkin that I've used blue. And I say looks very nice. Did you use the watercolour pencils and then go over with water then, Laura? Yeah, so I, yeah, used went over sort of with some shade, to, some light to darker, and then just use loads of water. And you had to leave the light bits? Yeah, I just, yeah, because I hadn't got a candle, I just left bits. Yeah, good. And oh, that wow. purple is actually Prussian blue in my watercolour pencils. Is it? It looks purple. Yeah. Is it purple to you? It does look purple to me, yeah, but it is mixed in with a bit of sienna as well. Okay, that might make it a little bit purple, but yeah, I like it. It's certainly Prussian blue. Oh, how funny. It looks purple. It does look, it looks purple in my photograph. Is it purple? Well, it, you... it looks really purple here, yeah. Okay, it must be the the blue in it then and the the red in the because the um, burnt sienna is quite a red brown, so yeah, I love that, well done. And then if anyone wants to do the splatting bit, Shelly likes this, this is her favorite bit. <laughs> Laura won't do it. My keyboard at this time. <laughs> You've got brown, you won't see it. <laughs> so if you want to do splatting, you need to do it with quite a lot of paint on your brush. So I'll show you how much paint I get. So I just go in my little thingy here and I just wiggle it around and I've got quite a lot of paint on there. You have to hold your paintbrush really tightly and you just bang it with your finger. It does go everywhere, I will say, but it is watercolour, so it will wash off. It's not acrylics. If you did with this with acrylics, you would ruin everything that it touches. That's the only problem with acrylics, because acrylics are plastic based. They're very difficult to take off. Well, they don't come off. If you get acrylics on your clothes, they are on there forever. So when I was at college, I used to paint on my clothes with acrylics, much my mum's disgust. All sorts of stuff. We used to have Winnie the Pooh up my arm. 
because it wouldn't come off in the wash. Once it was on there, that was it. I couldn't afford proper clothing paint, so we just used to improvise as students. We had acrylic paint in our paint box, so we just used to paint all over our clothes. Oh, Shelley's doing it. I can see. <laughs> Getting in a mess. Oh, dear. <laughs> Mine didn't splat very well. It came, it just did big blobs. What did I do wrong? Um, possibly too much paint, Sarah. Oh, okay. Blow. <laughs> it's all right. Just dab it with your kitchen towel. Have oh. a little practice. If you've got a spare bit of paper. Yeah. Have a little practice on that first. You mm. might have too much water on your brush. You need yeah. more paint than water, I would say. Right. Okay, Karen, Karen, I'll see you. Thanks for coming. Send me through your picture. If, if anyone's finished, don't feel, feel free to go because I know it's quite late and some of you want to get off. Please, if you could, pop your picture over to me. WhatsApp it over to me, that'd be lovely. I am instant messaged on Facebook. Okay, messages, okay. good. Yep, messages, okay. I've got it. Thanks, Karen. Cheers. Have a good week. Cheers, bye. Thank you, bye. Either, oh, what Sarah? Oh, I like that, Sarah. Sarah, beautiful. I, like, I liked it before I um. What did the, you do? The splats. I messed it up with the splats. Never mind. Never mind. Wait, let me turn it around, Sarah. Let me have a look. Or send it over because I'm sure you can just wash it all in. Why have you messed it up? Looks fine. Here. Let it dry. Because it always dries a lot lighter, watercolours. So you must never panic. You might find you get a leaf made and then all you have to do is go around with a little bit of a uni ball and create something. Mm. I would do some squiggles. You know these little little fine things? Yeah. Just go, go over it a little bit with that. Not much. Just so people won't see it, basically. I bet you people won't see it. Only you'll see it. Yeah, true. Bye, Christina. Have a good week too. Don't forget to send me your picture through. I will do when I finish it. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> if anyone needs a video, the recording, um, as you're in Art Club, you can just have it. Just let oh, me know, okay. message me. Okay, I'll do you want that. To do it again. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, bye. I'm off. Bye, Thank Hannah. You. I'm Sorry. looking forward to see your painting. I'm, I'm liking this one. Oh, <laughs> I'm excited to see it. <laughs> hey. I'll send it to See you next week. Bye then. Yeah, let's take care. Oh. I'm going to go, Debbie. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Send your picture for Julie. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, Debbie. Bye. Right. See you next week. Thank you, Bye. Thank you Julie. Thank you, Thanks, I'm Debbie. Gonna go Bye. Send it. See you next week. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to come up so you can see me. Because all you, oh, what am I doing? Okay. Thank you, Debbie. Bye. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you, Debbie. That was great. Bye. You're more than welcome. I said, if you need the videos, anyone just shout the recording if you need to do it or go over it. Um, I'll just ping it over to you. You're at Art Club, so it just gets sent over. Just need to let me know and I'll send it to you. Send that through, Sarah. Look forward to seeing that. Oh. Coming along. How are you doing, Sarah? Do you need to see my picture? Sorry, instead of my face. Yeah, it's just with shadows and things. Getting Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll go back down. I didn't want to be rude and just have my picture. There we go. It's back on there. Oh, I really need to be able, I don't know whether Zoom, Zoom needs to be able to have me as a sub picture so you can actually see me. I feel, feel like I'm kind of out of it when you've just got that going there. <laughs> It's not that clever. Has anyone noticed the difference in quality in my picture tonight? Uh, <clears throat> so Laura, where are you going? You were, you walked to the place where I rode my bike in the horrendous oh, weather yeah. today. Well, we didn't walk very far because it was soaked oh. to the skin weather. That's what very we were quickly. like in July. 
we literally were absolutely so treacherous because there were buses coming because it's a tiny little road really isn't it yeah yeah and there were buses coming down there and we were on our, our road bikes oh my god it was so scary absolutely my arm the next day i was holding on to my wheel because the wind was coming sideways and so every time a bus or something came past you were getting blown my poor arm just trying to keep myself the next day i could hardly move it just to keep myself on the road it looked lovely though even though it was raining yeah, uh, the weather was just so bizarre. One minute you couldn't see anything because the rain clouds were so low and then it's cleared. Oh, must be so the wind. Very bizarre weather. So we've had that one decent sunrise, but haven't seen the sun at all since. But it's nice though. You dress for the weather, weather anyway, aren't you, anyway? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Everything's waterproof. <laughs> I just think it's nice and beautiful scenery up there. I love it. I get just so excited when colours. I go. You just get, it's like when you go to the Lake District, I just get this buzz of excitement. I can't wait to run to the top of Mount. That's the trouble I want to go up. Ben Nevis for something. Oh, I haven't quite got that urge to run up there. Running just up the move by the lock is quite enough, thank you. <laughs> it looks beautiful, though. Very beautiful. I'm jealous. I want to go back up a mountain. Without having to to, to contemplate it, not getting lost, be able to just go and walk a lot worried about where I am, and how long it's going to take me with no food or water because I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah I did actually contemplate drinking out of the lake. That's how bad water supply I got at one point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I had one inch of water in my, my water bottle. That's one only time I thought, why did I only bring one water bottle? And I only brought, take one water bottle because water is heavy. Yeah. And I've never had to drink out of a lake. And I literally thought, I'm going to have to ration this. Yeah. And I'm going to have to go and drink out of a lake if I can't. And then drink Coca-Cola when you get home. You're right, yeah. you drink Coke, Coke or something. Oh, that purifies it in your tummy, does it? <laughs> uh, it kills all the bugs in your tummy. It kills everything. It's why it's not particularly good to drink. <laughs> All the no. time. I do drink it, I must admit. I do have a have a tip of not Coca-Cola, Pepsi Max is my one. <clears throat> um but yeah, they do say an open water they tell you to drink it after you've been swimming. Oh. So it's just it's probably a myth, to be fair. But yeah. it's done its job many a time. Or it's not a marketing tool. Oh possibly, Ross, possibly. <laughs> Well, I've, they've sold it to me. I've gone and bought it every blooming time. <laughs> hey, you see? You go swimming in a lake now. That's all you need. Probably keeps COVID away. That's all I need to sell. It's like, drink that, <laughs> you might get COVID. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you've been speaking to Trump, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, you see? <laughs> the influence of the world, he is. All these crazy yeah. ideas. Oh, dear. So where are you going tomorrow, Laura? Probably just going back to Oban. It's the only decent day's weather tomorrow because okay. we've got horrendous storms and gale force winds on Saturday. So. Oh, God, yes, we've got them here as well. So down the bottom here. Oh, that's not going to be. Apparently flying back on Sunday as well. So that could be okay. interesting. That'd be bumpy. Yeah, just a bit. I'd have a bit wine if I was you. <laughs> That'd be right. Bumpy's good. Flight. You might get so if the wind's behind you, you'll go fast. That's true, yeah. Get home quicker. <laughs> we had that when we went to Crete. We had wind behind us, but we didn't have a bumpy landing, so you might be lucky. It's not the wind's supposed to disappear on Sunday. Not up here, it's not. I think when you get down here, you'll be all right. Just gotta get no, through the mountain range. You'll be all right. Just hang on to your seat. <laughs> like so you strap yourself in <laughs> I always do that extra pull tight and then plug my ears in because the people scream and do stupid things when uh, they're kind of doing silly things I, I'm done Debbie I'll post it I'll send it through oh that's beautiful love that you've got the light perfectly as well well done that's lovely I'll post it through anyway thank you that's lovely Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.